Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. I think all of you are students here, okay? I just want to find out how many foreign students are here. Please lift up your hands. How many Malaysian students? Okay, among the Malaysian students, how many can only understand English? <laughs> That means they don't understand English. <laughs> when I ask them a question in English, how many can only understand English? Please, uh, please, uh, okay, how many can understand English fluently among the Malaysian students? Please lift up your hand. Nobody is lifting up their hand. So what are you studying in the university? <laughs> okay, how many can understand the Malay language among the Malays? Please lift up your hand. <laughs> 100%. How many of the foreign students who can understand the Malay language? Please please have the same. Stand up. I want to see all these beautiful people. Stand up. The foreign students who can speak Malay. Please stand up. Who can understand Malay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Two. You are from Indonesia. Yeah, you can understand Malay. <laughs> you can speak Malay. Three of you are dying. These three persons are real dying. Rasulullah uh, so, so asked the Sahaba to learn a language. So that Sahaba learned that language in, in 12 days. Why? Just to spread Islam. You see? I went to Nizamuddin in certain years. I met Mona Ahmed Lad. I said, Mona, I want to learn the Urdu language. You please make dua so that I can understand the Urdu language and speak the Urdu language. No, 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 no. You don't have to learn Urdu, he said. You must learn Arabic. He told me to learn what? Yeah, one last comment. Oh, since there is less space behind, please come forward a little bit. Please come forward. If you move an inch, there will be 10 feet behind there, okay? Okay, everybody, please move an inch. Come closer. Come, come, come closer, please. Don't worry, I won't eat you. Come on. Ah, tuan-tuan, pelajar-pelajar Malaysia, ah, dulu apa rapat sikit. Ada bag di tengah tu. Ada ke? Ada bag di tengah-tengah tu, mengganggu. Sebab apa akan ada ada pelajar akan datang kemudian. Ah, kita bagi tempat untuk kawan kita. Allah akan bagi tempat untuk kita dalam syurga. Come. come, come. So this morning, one brother by the name of Dr. Kamran, he will be speaking. So he told me to come earlier to see how many person can speak English. If everybody can understand English, he will be only speaking in English. But if many people don't understand English, then no choice. I have to translate into Malay. So A, only English. B, English with Malay translation. So only one you can only lift up your hand once only. Okay? Who suggests A? Only in English. Okay. Who suggests B? English with Malay translation. So A lost the vote. <laughs> okay, however, Dr. Kamran will decide, okay? And we leave it to him. But I will tell the was that the undi in English? The word that we made just now? I tell him the division of the word. Let him decide what language to speak. Okay? Okay. How many of you here are PhD students? Just lift up your hands. PhD, permanent head damage. How many? <laughs> How many PhD students? I was a PhD student. I'm doing my PhD in... Oopsie, although I'm old, 54 years old, I'm a student also. Until death, we are students, okay? When Elias said, if you think you are a student until death, Allah will forgive you. Although I'm a principal of a secondary school, but I'm still a student. Inshallah, if you make a mistake, Allah will forgive you. If you think you are a teacher, if you make a mistake, Allah will catch you. So you want to be students always? Yeah. Leave up your hands. <laughs> so Allah will love you. That is why in hadith it is said that you must always have the intention to learn until death. 
Inshallah, who has the intention to learn until then? We are all learners, brothers. Good. Is Dr. Kamran coming? I'm waiting for him. I do not know. I don't have any point to speak to you now. <laughs> so, uh, how lucky you are because you are students. Students spread Islam to the entire world. There was, there was a student by the name of Sanahullah. He was studying in the Agliga Muslim University. He got an offer to study PhD in France. He went to see Hadraji. Oh Hadraji, I got an offer to study PhD in France. But you know, anybody goes to France, to Paris, finish. His iman will go off. Okay? Hadraji said, no problem, you go to Paris and take your PhD with one intention. The Jews and the Christians, they are trying to make Makkah and Medina into Paris and London. But you go to Paris, you make Paris and London into Makkah and Medina. <laughs> so he went to Paris with that intention. Every person he saw, like a Muslim, he gave salam. But nobody answered his salam. After one week, one person answered his salam. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum salam. You are a Muslim? Yes, I am Muslim. Please take me to the Muslim community. Well, there is no Muslim community here, but we used to pray every week. Oh, you pray our Friday prayers? Yes, we pray our Friday prayers. Where do you pray? You pray at this place. Please take me there on Friday. No, no, no. We don't gather on Friday. We gather on Sunday for our Friday prayers. <laughs> That was the condition then. Because why are you gathering on Sunday for your, for your Friday prayers? Because we only have leave on Sunday. That was the condition in the 1950s. Okay? Then he started doing the effort over there. Every person he met, he met heaven. Today, all, most of the non-Muslims are embracing Islam in France. You see, one of the fastest growing country, the non-Muslim are embracing Islam is in, is in France. See, the ladies are wearing burqa. The government is f afraid. What's happening to France? Every lady is becoming Muslim. Uh, they are changing their dress. So, they don't like it. So, they make a law so that the Muslims do not wear the burqa, the hijab, the burqa. But Muslims, their iman are strong. Okay? They don't go out of the houses, only to certain places where burqa is allowed, they used to go there. Just to safeguard their, their iman. Inshallah, eh? So, we Muslims, wherever we are, we should safeguard our iman. Inshallah? Yeah, okay, Dr. Kamran is here. Uh, he is coming. Please give him the way in the center. Dr. Kamran, I think you should walk in the center. In the side, there's a walk in the center. Please give way to Dr. Kamran. He's coming. How many students already spent one year? Any students? No. Four months? How many students spent four months? Alhamdulillah. Forty days? How many students spent forty days? How many students just spent three days? Just spent three days only. Okay. Come, Dr. Kamran. Please be seated. I already made a vote just now. In that election, that they need the translation. Okay? So, but if you want to make another election, it's up to you. Okay. It's all right. Okay. So you're talking to them in English? <laughs> okay, you can test them again. So, how many of you need translation, please? Bapa Wan perlukan penterjemahan ke bahasa Melayu. Many of them. Don't speak too long. I'm an old man. Short short speeches, okay? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very kind that he has brought us into the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have not done this ourselves. This is the blessing and in the grace Allah has done unto us. 
Tuan-tuan dan tuan-tuan sekalian perempuan pula. Tuan-tuan sekalian, marilah kita bersyukur kepada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Kerana Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala telah jadikan kita umat Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Bukan kita yang telah membuat keputusan. Allah yang telah memilih kita untuk menjadi umat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 50,000 years before the creation of the skies and earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written our names as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 15 ribu tahun sebelum alam ini dijadikan nama kita telah ditunus sebagai ummat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam We are not Pakistanis and Malaysians or Indians or Bangladeshis. We are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Kita bukan orang Pakistan, orang Bangladesh, orang Malaysia atau orang India, tapi kita adalah umat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The person who understands this and accepts this in his heart will understand why all of us have got together here today sesiapa yang Allah memberi kefahaman dan kefahaman yang sebenar di dalam hatinya tentang perkara ini barulah dia akan faham mengapa kita kumpul di sini all this movement across the earth of jumaats taking their bags on their back walking in deserts and mountains and different countries and 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 doing the work of dawat of tablid will be understood by that person who accepts that i am the banda of allah and the ummati of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and full stop hari ini pergerakan yang berlaku di seluruh dunia membawa back di belakang mereka mereka mengembara di atas gunung Mereka mengembara di dalam hutan Mereka mengembara di kampung-kampung Mereka ini faham Bahawa mereka terima Dan faham betul-betul di dalam lusuk hati mereka Bahawa mereka adalah umat baginda Sallallahu alaihi wasallam Yang dipertanggungjawabkan untuk membuat satu usaha In 1980s I was studying in a hospital in London when first I got introduced to the work of Dawat in Tabriz one junior doctor came to the hospital who had spent four months in India and Pakistan wearing a imama and a big beard shalwar kameez miswak in his pocket in St Thomas's Hospital University in London Dalam tahun 1980 semasa saya orang seorang pelajar doktor di University St Thomas London datang satu orang doktor muda dia berpakai jubah dan seluar ada miswak di poketnya dia memakai serban di kepalanya Maka dia telah jumpa saya di sana dan telah memperkenalkan usaha ini kepada saya. After one week of working in the hospital, when I came for the round at nine o'clock, the staff nurse and the matron they took me to a room where all the nurses had got together and were very angry. I asked them what is happening. They said this boy is working here with us for one week now. He is coming early at six o'clock in the morning, and works till twelve o'clock in the night. But he doesn't look at us. What is wrong with this man? So selepas satu minggu doktor muda itu bekerja di hospital, saya ditarik untuk masuk ke sebuah bilik. Dalam bilik itu subhanallah semua nurse dan perempuan-perempuan yang kerja di hospital mereka komplain kepada saya apa dah jadi dengan doktor muda tadi 
Dua datang kerja pukul 6 pagi Dan balik pukul 12 malam Tapi sekali pun dia tak tengok kami yang cantik-cantik ini Tambah eh I told them Sendiri tambah Because I had not spent any time in Dawat in Tabliq I didn't know how to make these ladies understand So I told them let's call Dr. Ajmal And ask him what is wrong with you Maka saya pun tak tahu macam mana nak cakap dengan misi-misi ini, dengan nurse ini Tak apa, biarlah saya panggil Dr. Ajmal sendiri Dan dia yang memberi penerangan apa dah jadi pada dia When he came down, he sat on the chair looking down on the floor I told him, look doctor, these ladies are working on the ward with us We call them sisters And they run around with us, help us with the patients, and they are very angry. You don't look at them. What is wrong? So, saya pun beritahu kepada Dr. Ajmal, why Dr. Ajmal dengar di sini. Ini sister-sister, misi-misi yang kerja ni, ni kerja dengan kita. Dia bukan kerja dengan dinding, ya. Ni kerja dengan kita. Tapi mereka komplain pasal awak ni. Awak langs, awak masih cakap pun tengok ke bawah. Cakap dengan orang, dia tengok ke bawah. Dan awak semasa kerja tak tengok mereka. Jadi mereka marah dengan awak. Apa dah jadi pada kamu ni? The doctor kept quiet for a few minutes. Then he said, I want to ask them a question. If they have a necklace of diamonds in their house, where do they keep it? One of the nurse shouted, we put it in the safe. He said, because it is too valuable, You don't allow anybody to touch it. You don't allow anybody to look at it. Then he said, this woman has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a mother or a wife or a sister or a daughter. And it is a very gracious and respectable place. Not everybody is allowed to look at them and touch them. And you are mother, wife or sister of somebody. This is in your respect. That I keep my eyes down. Maka selepas beberapa minit doktor itu mendiamkan diri. Selepas itu dia mula bersuara. Dia tanya satu soalan kepada semua misi-misi di situ. Wah misi-misi sekalian, kalau kamu ada belian yang begitu cantik, di manakah kamu akan letakkannya? Belian yang cantik dan berharga, di manakah kamu akan letakkannya? Kata seorang misi yang dah senior Dia kata sudah tentu kami akan letakkannya dalam sebuah kotak yang cantik Dan simpan di dalam rumah Kata Dr. Ijmal tadi Wahai kakak-kakak sekalian Kamu ini sangat berharga dan sangat bernilai Ada yang menjadi ibu, ada yang menjadi kakak Ada yang menjadi adik-beradik, ada yang menjadi anak Jadi benda yang sangat berharga tidak patut didedahkan mesti disimpan di dalam mesti ditutup auratnya all the ladies sitting in the room started crying semua perempuan di dalam bilik itu mereka mula menangis one of the ladies said that we are used as dusters in our society semua perempuan begitu kami dipakai sebagai dusters tong sampah eh Uh, duster, apa ni? Pemadam tu Pemadam papa hitam tu Kami dipakai sebagai pemadam papa hitam di tempat kami He got up and he went away Doktor tadi bangun dan dia pergi One week later I came to the ward And the matron of the ward and two staff nurses were in full hijab One week later I came Eh, saya datang ke, ke hospital Dan saya lihat matron Matron tu ketua apa? Juru rawat dan seorang lagi sister Mereka telah pakai Hijab atau purdah yang penuh I asked these ladies What has happened? They said we went to the Regent Park Jamia Masjid last night And we have said Kalima Ashadu Allah Ilaha illallah Maka mereka beritahu Mereka telah pergi di satu tempat Bernama Regent Park Di sana mereka telah memeluk Islam Dengan mengucap Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah 
wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu this young doctor has not made any bayan any speeches he has not taken any gun or sword to fight allah is giving hidayat to people because what is in quran and what is in hadith he is trying to bring it in his body and work as a doctor jadi doktor tadi dia tak banyak cakap dia tak banyak bayan cuma apa yang diajar dalam quran dan hadis dia bawa amalan Islam itu dalam penghidupannya jadi amalan Islam itu menjadi sumber hidayat kepada manusia ummat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ini umat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have gone so far so far kita telah jauh dan jauh but we don't understand where we have gone dan kita pun tak tahu di mana kita sedang menuju allah subhanahu taala has given a great respect a great grace and responsibility to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu taala telah memberikan satu tanggungjawab yang begitu besar kepada umat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam torat is the book of musa alaihi salam In Torah Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says there is an ummah coming in the end who will be doing the work of the prophets. Kitab Taurat diturunkan kepada Nabi Musa alaihi salam. Di dalam kitab Taurat ada dinyatakan bahawa akan akan datang satu umat umat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi salam. Ini adalah umat akhir zaman dan mereka akan membuat kerja Nabi Musa alaihi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there will be common people they won't have any ilm and they won't have any hilm and they will do the work of prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I will give them ilm from my ilm and I will give them hilm from my hilm Nabi Musa alaihi salam bertanya ya Allah ini umat ini orang biasa saja mereka tidak ada ilmu dan mereka tidak ada helm helm hikmah lah mereka tidak ada ilm dan mereka tidak ada helm Allah Subhanahu wa taala berfirman mereka oleh kerana membuat kerja nabi aku akan berikan mereka ilmu daripada ilmuku aku akan beri mereka helm daripada helmku do you understand what is the meaning of helm tuan-tuan faham apa erti helm helm I tell you a story. Sekarang cerita satu cerita. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out of his house one day all the sahaba ikram were sitting like this. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sekali keluar rumahnya para sahabat sedang duduk seperti ini. One man got got up and he said, "Oh Rasul of Allah, may my mother and father be sacrificed on you. I live near the waters far away." and my tribe had accepted islam but now we have come to a stage where all of us are starving please help us jadi satu orang di kalangan mereka telah bangun dia kata ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saya telah memeluk agama islam dan kaum saya juga telah memeluk agama islam tapi kami duduk di satu tempat yang jauh saya dan kaum saya telah mengalami satu keadaan sekarang ini iaitu kami lapar hampir kematian Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked Hazrat Ali radhiyallahu have we have anything left in our treasures to help this brother he said no nothing is left he asked the crowd anybody who can give me help as a debt I will return him to him so that I can help this man nobody got up except one Jew got up and he presented a bag full of ashrafi to help them nabi and he said i one month later you will give me the dates of that farm in return nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him don't point to a farm I will give you this much this much dates after one month. This man he gave the money it was given to that another brother he went away. After the month has passed 3 4 days were left. 
This man was sitting in the majlis. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out of his house. He suddenly got up and grabbed Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his chest and started scolding him. You Quraysh, you Hashmis, like this, this, this. Hazrat Umar al-Hanu became very angry. He took out his sword. I will kill him. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "O oh Umar, you should not be shouting at him. You should be asking me." to return his death go the dates have come from this this place you give him his share of his dates when he they started going away he called him back umar come back because you scolded him give this this much dates more than his share jadi bila orang itu berkata demikian nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bertanya sahabat siapakah nabi panggil sayyidina ali Wahai Sayyidina Ali radhiyallahu anhu, ada tak apa-apa yang ada dalam khazanah? Sayyidina Ali kata tidak ada apa-apa pun. Dan Nabi tanya sahabat sekalian, ada tak sesiapa yang boleh bantu orang ini? Semua sahabat mendiamkan diri. Akhirnya satu Yahudi dia bangun. Dia kata, Ya Nabi Allah, saya boleh bantu. Saya ada satu bungkusan yang penuh dengan wang ashrafi, wang perak. Tetapi satu syarat saya boleh bagi pinjam kepada Nabi dalam masa satu bulan Nabi kena pulangkan peminjaman ini dengan kebun itu dengan kebun itu Nabi kata jangan kamu tunjukkan kebun mana cuma saya berjanji untuk pulangkan selepas sebulan apa yang telah kamu hutangkan kepada saya maka selepas beberapa hari tinggal 4 5 hari lagi nak sampai sebulan belum cukup sebulan lagi Yahudi tadi telah datang kepada Nabi dia telah pegang le, ba, leher atau baju leher Nabi begini maka dia kata sekarang sudah sampai masanya kamu Quraisy kamu Hashimi kamu tak tunaikan janji maka sahabat sangat marah orang yang paling marah Sayyidina Umar radhiyallahu anhu dia telah nak keluarkan pedangnya dia nak bunuh Yahudi tadi Nabi telah tegur Sayyidina Umar radhiyallahu anhu jangan bersikap demikian sepatutnya kamu kena nasihatkan saya supaya bayarnya bayar hutangnya dengan segera maka Rasulullah SAW telah begitu kepada Sayyidina Umar pergi di tempat itu di sana ada buah kurma yang baru sampai ambil buah kurma tadi bayar hutang Yahudi tadi tetapi dalam perjalanan Sayyidina Nabi SAW panggil Sayyidina Umar balik dia kata, Wai Sena Umar Beri dia lebih daripada apa yang saya hutang Kerana apa? Kerana kamu telah marah dia tadi Oleh kerana itu, kena bayar lebih kepada dia When Umar Adlalu started giving him his share of dates And when he started giving him extra He said, Umar, why are you giving me more? He said, because I have scolded you Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked me to give you more This Yahudi asked Umar radhiyallahu anhu, "Oh Umar, you don't know me?" Umar radhiyallahu anhu said, "No, I don't know you." He said, "I am that that great man of knowledge of Yahud, very big alim." Said, "You are such a big alim, and you were so rude to a Nabi." He said, "Oh Umar, in my books I had all the indications of the prophet of last zaman." Everything was right, but there is a word written in my book that he will be Halim, and I didn't know how to check this, so I played all the drama to see what is the level of his Halim. You be witness to this. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasul. Maka apabila korma yang lebih telah diberikan kepada Yahudi tadi. Yahudi tadi telah cakap Sayyidina Umar, kenapa kamu beri saya lebih korma? Maka Sayyidina Umar jawab, saya bayar lebih kerana Nabi suruh bayar lebih. Kerana saya telah memarahi awak, maka Nabi suruh saya bayar lebih korma kepada awak. Yahudi kata kepada Sayyidina Umar, kamu nak kenal ke saya siapa saya, siapa saya wahai Umar? Sayyidina Umar kata, saya tak kenal. Saya lah nama sekian-sekian di kabilah Yahudi sekian-sekian 
Dan saya adalah pendeta Atas ketua ulama Yahudi Saya telah lihat di dalam kitab saya Bahawa sifat-sifat Nabi Dan saya perhatikan semua sifat-sifat Nabi Yang diterangkan di dalam kitab itu Ada pada Nabi Cuma satu perkara saya tak dapat periksa Iaitu untuk memeriksa hilam Nabi Hilam Nabi itu saya tak dapat periksa Maka saya telah buat sandiwara ini Saya telah buat drama ini Sandiwara ini Untuk menentukan sifat hilam Nabi Dan pada hari ini Saya telah nampak sifat hilam Nabi Dan wahai Omar Kamu jadi saksi Sekarang saya ucap syahadah Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu So my brothers Musa a.s. requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Allah, give me this ummah Because Musa a.s. knew what was this all about If you give a diamond to a child What will you do with it? He probably will play marbles with it Because he does not know the value of that, this, that diamond But if you give that diamond, or a, or a jeweler looks and sees this diamond, he probably will steal it or get himself killed or kill somebody to get hold of that diamond. Because he knows the value. In Arabic it is written that Musa al -Islam book was in, in a form of tablets. So Musa al -Islam threw away these tablets and said, Oh Allah, give me this ummah. And the Ummah today does not even know how great respect Allah has given us. So Nabi Musa alaihi salam memahami kemuliaan Ummah ini. Nabi Musa alaihi salam telah doa kepada Allah. Ya Allah jadikanlah saya Rasul Ummah ini. Kenapa Nabi Musa alaihi salam seorang yang memahami nilai Ummah ini. Seorang saudagar belian. Dan seorang lagi bukan saudagar belian Seorang saudagar belian Dia tahu nilai belian Dia faham nilai belian Maka apabila belian diberikan kepadanya Dia akan menghargai Tetapi kalau seorang itu tidak kenal belian Kalau diberikan belian Dia tidak akan menghargai Di Musa AS dia kenal belian Umat ini adalah belian Maka dengan sebab itu Nabi Musa AS telah berdoa kepada Allah untuk jadi Rasul umat ini. Tapi sedihnya kita hari ini yang kita ini tak kenal dia kita ini belian. Kita hari ini tak kenal kita ini umat bagi dia Rasulullah SAW. Kita tak tahu nilai kita sendiri. Zabur is the book of Dawud AS. In Zabur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Dawud, after you A prophet is coming, his name is Ahmad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be amongst the leaders. Never make me angry. I have forgiven all his mistakes from before. And his ummah, I have blessed with my rahmat. And I have given those nawafil to this ummah which I had given to Anbiya Karam. And I have made that work obligatory on this Ummah, which I had made obligatory on Anbiya Karam. And on the day of judgment when this Ummah will come, they will have the nur of the nur of Anbiya Karam. Jadi, kitab Zabur telah diberikan kepada Nabi Daud AS. Di dalam kitab Zabur ada dinyatakan, bahawa akan datang satu Nabi di akhir zaman Bernama Ahmad Ataupun Muhammad Dan Nabi ini akan Ataupun telah diampunkan dosanya Dan umat Nabi ini akan diberikan rahmat Dan umat Nabi ini semayang sunatnya Seperti semayang sunat Nabi-Nabi Atau amalan sunatnya Seperti amalan sunat Nabi-Nabi dan mereka akan membuat kerja dakwah Nabi Dan bukan itu saja Di akhirat wajah mereka Seperti wajah kenabian 
In the book of Injil, the Bible of Isa alayhi salam, it is written that the Ummah will come in the Akhirah, who will do the work of the Prophets. And their Azan will echo in the skies. Their Saf in Jihad and Salat will be like Saf of the angels. And when they will climb upwards, they will always say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When they will climb downwards, the zikr will be, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And La ilaha illallah will be always on their tongue. And they will do the work of the Prophet. Isa alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, give me this Ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Nabi of Akhir Zaman. Isa alayhi salam begged, O oh Allah, bring me into this Ummah. And Isa alayhi salam will come back in the Jamia Masjid of Damish from the skies. Mehdi alayhi salam will be standing with all his army and Isa alayhi salam will come down and Mehdi alayhi salam will ask him to become Imam and he will say no, the Iqamat has been said for you and he will live as the Ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. yang diturunkan kepada Nabi Isa alayhi salam ada dituliskan bahawa akan datang satu umat, umat Ahmad atau umat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Umat ini sangat-sangat dimuliakan iaitu di antara kemuliaan umat ini iaitu suara azan mereka akan berkemandang di langit suara azan mereka di dunia ini akan berkemandang di langit second quality after the azan ha, sah mereka di dalam semayang dan sah mereka semasa jihad seperti sah Malaikat Sah malaikat Dan apabila mereka naik bukit Mereka akan cakap Allahu Akbar Apabila mereka turun bukit Mereka akan cakap Subhanallah Maha suci Allah Dan lidah mereka akan sentiasa berzikir La ilaha illallah Dan mereka akan membuat kerja dakwah Nabi-Nabi Nabi Isa AS -Nabi. berdoa dengan Allah Ya Allah Ya Tuhan ku Jadikanlah aku Bagi umat ini Allah akan beritahu Tidak boleh Sudah ada hari untuk umat ini Itu Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Kalau begitu ya Allah Jadikanlah aku sebagai umat Kepada umat Nabi itu Maka doa ini diterima Nabi Isa AS Akan turun daripada langit Dan akan turun di menara Masjid Jamik Damsid dan selepas itu, masa dia turun, Imam Mahdi dan seluruh orang-orang yang mengikut daripada titik itu akan berada di situ. Dan Nabi dan Imam Mahdi akan beritahu kepada Nabi Isa AS, silalah jadi imam kami. Nabi Isa AS tidak mahu menjadi imam. Dia kata, kamat tadi telah dibacakan untuk kamu Imam Mahdi jadi imam. Saya akan jadi muktadi, saya akan jadi makmum, saya akan jadi makmum, Imam Mahdi akan jadi imam. Seorang Nabi, Nabi Isa AS, dia juga akan jadi makmum sebagai umat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So are you all ready to take this responsibility? Adakah tuan-tuan sedia untuk mengambil tanggungjawab ini? Those brothers From today onwards, who are ready not to call themselves anything else except the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, please raise your hand. Allah Akbar. No. So, tawaf terima. I don't have to translate that. Ah, dah saya kasih. Sesiapa, sesiapa yang sedia untuk dipanggil umat bagi dasar-dasar, lain nama tak mungkin lah. Nama itu saja. Sampai mati atau sampai kiamat angkat tangan mereka. Mubarak. Mubarak. I tell you what. As soon as you raise your hands with ikhlas, 
there are two promises for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saya nak cakap satu perkara selepas tuan-tuan angkat tangan ada dua janji daripada Allah untuk tuan-tuan sekalian. First promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this that from this minute, this second Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. Janji yang pertama daripada saat ini Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bersama-sama dengan tuan-tuan. Second promise is from now onward He will teach you and terbiah you. Yang janji yang kedua daripada sekarang dia akan ajar dan terbiah tuan-tuan. Insya Allah. How will he teach you and terbiah you? Bagaimana dia akan not you us you sebenarnya. Ah, kalau you I won't get sih. Jadi dia akan terbiah kita lah. Kata saya tak apa ni. Dia akan terbiah lah kita. We okay. Yes. Allah Subhanahu Taala is telling us the stories how. He terbiyas a person when he wants to terbiyat him. Allah Subhanahu Taala mengajar bagaimana dia nak terbiyas sesuatu satu orang. Allah sendiri akan ajar cara dia. Ibrahim alaihissalam is a small baby just born to a mother. The mother is mushrik. The father is mushrik. All the village and all the people are mushrik. And Namrud has declared that he is the Rab. This small baby. There is no Darulun, there is no Siri Pataling, there is no Nizamuddin, there is no rival. This boy, small baby, lying in the jungle alone. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling the story to me and you, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how I nourish people. Kesan Nabi Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, Nabi Ibrahim Alaihi Salam, anak yang dilahirkan. Ibu ni bukan Islam, Muslim. Bapa ni bukan Islam, musyrik. Dia dibesarkan di dalam hutan. Allah mengajar kepada kita pada ketika itu tidak ada raven, tidak ada seri betaling, tidak ada nizam mudin, tambah satu lagi tidak ada kakri, tambah ada saya. Tak ada. Semua tak ada. Ya, yeah? tetapi Allah sendiri yang apa yang terbe Nabi Ibrahim alaihissalatu wassalam. Lying in a jungle, nobody to feed this child. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling us the story of this child. Ulama says that his body used to grow in one week as the body of the other people grow in one year. La ilaha illallah. Allah can do anything. He can bring a Adam alayhi salam without mother and father. He can bring Hawa alayhi salam without a mother. Isa alayhi salam without a father. A camel outside, out of the rocks for Salih alayhi salam. He's Allah. But how is he teaching this child Iman and the work of Dawud? There's no teacher. Only one question in, in, in the heart of this child. Who is my Rabb? And Allah taught him everything. Jadi, Ibrahim alayhi salam pada ketika itu ada namrud yang zalim. Jadi, Allah yang tarbiyah Ibrahim alayhi salam. Walaupun dia hidup di dalam hutan, Allah telah besarkan dia, yaitu dalam masa seminggu saja badannya dibesarkan seperti umur satu tahun. Allah yang besarkan dia, dan bukan itu saja Allah yang telah ajarkan dia siapa Tuhan sebenarnya. Ini Allah. Allah akan terbiak siapa yang Allah kehendaki. Siapa yang Allah kendaki Allah akan ajar dia. Ibrahim alaihissalamnya hati satu saja. Siapakah Rob saya? Siapakah Tuhan saya yang sebenar? Apabila di dalam hatinya ada kehendak itu Allah sendiri yang ajar kepada kepada itu kepada dia. This 18 weeks old boy looking like an 18 years boy came home and started living with his mother. And he asked his mother, Oh my mother. Who is my Rab? The mother said, "You have been born from me, and I cook for you, and I clean for you, so I am your Rab." <laughs> He said, "Okay, then who is your Rab?" <laughs> you know, Dai always knows how to talk to who he is talking in his ways. He never stops. So the mother said. Oh, your father is the owner of this house. 
and he brings money and things and he protects us. So he is my Rabb. So Musa asked uh, Ibrahim Islam, who is his Rabb? The mother said, oh, Namrud, because he works in his court and he's a minister and he gets the pay from Namrud. So Namrud is his Rabb. For us also. Wherever we are getting our money from, we think that is our Rabb. Yes. You ask somebody to go for 40 days? So my mother does not allow me. My father will become angry. At the age of 18, Muhammad bin Qasim had conquered half of India. And we are still stuck with the mother and father because that is our Ilah. Yes. Namrud is the place where the money is coming from. So he is our Rabb. Ibrahim was not satisfied. When the father came back, the mother complained to him. This, this son of yours is talking ajib. <laughs> like, you know, a brother goes out for 40 days and then when he goes home, the mother and father are confused. What is he talking about? Ala kwasa, makhluk tita kwasa. So is she complained to the father. Father, come here. What is wrong? He said, my father, I see you, you make statues of stones and wood. When their ear or nose breaks down, you throw them into the uh, dustbin. And when it is made all right, you sell that and people prostrate and worship in front of a stone. He said, get out of my house. So Ibrahim al -Islam had to leave. He came out. He saw people prostrating in front of stars. Oh, this must be the Rab. But this disappears. Rab should not disappear. The sun came out. Oh, this is so much light, so big. This must be the Rab. But this goes down. Rab should not go down. It should always be up. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of this worry and this, 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 <laughs> Desire inside the heart of Ibrahim al Islam opened the knowledge of everything in this world. This is the mother, this is the father, this is the shop, this is the sky, this is the moon, this is gold, this is silver. Ibrahim al Islam realized five things. Oh, from my mother up to the sun, everything is a creation has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its creation and it finishing and benefiting and giving laws and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dependent upon anything. So he made a declaration. Inni to I have turned away my face from all these things. They can do nothing. Towards one Allah, Hanifam wa, I have turned towards the side. From today onwards, my studying, my praying, my dying, my living. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Si Ibrahim alaihi salam umur 18 minggu. Tetapi badannya dah besar seperti 18 tahun. Dia datang kepada ibunya dan tanya ibunya siapakah Rob saya. Ibunya kata saya melahirkan awak. Saya memberi awak makan saya memberi awak perlindungan jadi saya lah rob awak kata Ibrahim AS kepada ibunya siapa pula rob ibu ibunya temenung sekejap kemudian ibunya kata bapa awak rob kerana bapa awak membawa makanan ke rumah bapa awak sediakan rumah bapa awak menyelamatkan awak bapa awak lah rob Kena Ibrahim AS seorang yang bijak Dia tanya soalan lagi Siapa pula rob bapa saya? Siapa pula rob bapa saya? Maka ibunya temenung sekejap Rob bapa kamu Namrud kata dia Namrud raja itu Kerana bapa Ibrahim AS seorang menteri di istana Dan menteri dengan Namrud Ya, Namrud lah yang memberi segala-gala pelindungan untuk bapanya Maka si ibu tadi telah memberitahu kepada Ibrahim AS 
Banamrudlah Tuhan Bapanya dah Tuhan dia Dia kata tak mungkin Namrud tak mungkin Baiklah tunggu bapa saya balik Tunggu bapa saya balik Maka apabila bapanya balik ke rumah Dia telah tanya kepada bapanya Wahai bapaku Kamu dengan Namrud sembah berhala Tapi berhala yang kamu buat Kadang-kadang saya lihat ada yang patah tangan Ada yang patah kaki Jadi kaki yang patah dan tangan yang patah Kamu buang Jadi tak mungkin Ini Tuhan Bapa ada merah pada muka Keluar daripada rumah ini Maka Ibrahim AS Apabila dihalau keluar rumah Dia keluar rumah Bila dia keluar rumah Dia lihat orang sembah bintang Oh ini mesti Tuhan Tetapi bintang itu pun hilang juga Oh Tuhan tak mungkin hilang Kemudian dia lihat matahari Oh mungkin inikah Tuhan Matahari dilihat dari pagi sampai ke petang Lepas petang hilang pula Tak mungkin Tuhan hilang Jadi matahari pun bukan Tuhan Matahari pun bukan apa? Bukan Tuhan Jadi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Kepada seorang yang hendak mencari Tuhan Allah yang akan ajar dia Dan dia akan timbul macam-macam persoalan Persoalan-persoalan itu untuk mengenal Tuhan jadi macam kita kata beliau yang baru balik 40 hari Kita pun akan cakap macam-macam perkara Yang bapa kita pun tak faham Allah maha kuasa, makhluk tak kuasa bapa kita pun pening kepala kadang-kadang Ya? Apa kita kata beliau Jadi ringkas cerita bahawa Orang yang nak rapatkan diri kepada Allah Allah akan rapatkan dia kepada Allah Subhanahu SWT Tetapi hari ini kita pun macam Ibrahim AS Sama juga kadang-kadang macam Apa ni, bapa Nabi Ibrahim AS Yang memberi dia rezeki Memberi dia makan, namrud Maka dia menganggap itulah ilah dia Hari ini kita dah umur 18 tahun Usaha dakwah pun kita tak kenal lagi Padahal Muhammad bin Qasim Satu pemuda yang berumur 18 tahun Dia telah pergi ke benua India Separuh India masuk Islam Bapa umur dia ketika itu 18 tahun Kita 18 tahun masih berhingus lagi Tambahan saya itu eh? Jadi rengkahnya Sedara-sedara sekalian Maka apabila hari ini apa berlaku pada kita Kita masih lagi ilah-ilah yang lain Bila tanya kenapa tak keluar Mak saya tak bagi Kenapa tak keluar Bapa saya tak bagi Kenapa tak keluar Majikan saya tak bagi Ini semua dah jadi ilah kita Jadi saya harap ini ilah atau Tuhan kita lah saya harap jangan ini semua jadi ilah kita. Ini bukan Tuhan kita. Tuhan kita Allah. Siapa Tuhan kita Tuhan? Allah. Allah. So how many of brothers sitting here have decided from today whatever will we do lillahi rabbil alamin. Kita juga saya terlupa terjemah dia. Kita juga telah berjanji di dalam sembahyang kita. Ini wajah tu wajhia. Mana aku tidak mau menghadapkan wajah aku ke siapa-siapa pun tak mau. Aku hanya mau menghadapkan wajah itu kepada apa? Kepada Hanif, mam. Hanya kepada Allah. Inna solati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin. Sesungguhnya semayangku, hidupku, matiku, segala-galanya lillahi rabbil alamin. Hanya untuk Allah. Siapa nak jadikan Seluruh hidupnya Lillahi Rabbil Alamin Untuk Allah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar My brothers Allah We were talking about Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Will terbiyat you In the In his lap Of his rahmat Yes Allah knows What you need And what you don't need Better than we We know ourselves Yes He is telling us the story because of this, because to make you understand by Ummat of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, don't look here and there. Don't look at the civilizations of my enemies looking for your success and your tarbiyat. Today we are, we are fall down in disgrace trying to imitate those who are the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have not understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 70,000 children have been killed 
so that Musa alayhi salam does not grow up. And Allah is telling us the story. I put it in the heart of the mother, put him in the box, put him in the river, put him in the lap of Firaun, and I grew up. Why are you looking here and there? You have said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad. This boy, he grew up, young man. Musa alayhi salam. Those who are not Musa, 70,000 got killed. And though that who is Musa is growing up in the house of Firaun. All he did is slap a man. He didn't want to kill him. Allah killed him. Allah wants to show that Nabi also is going to do anything. He's running away. Spending 10 years with Shoaib alayhi salam. Marry his daughter. Got all the sheep of his share. And coming back towards his, uh, his, his uh, missile. To his mother, crossing a jungle, very cold, the wife is ill, I want to get something for you. And when he goes to the, to the, to the, to the mountain of Tur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tashkil him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know the rights of the wife, lying in the jungle, with the baby in her, in her, in her, in her body. Allah ta'ala tashkil him. And Allah ta'ala told him, Inni ma'akum asma wa ara. I am with you. And I am looking. And I am listening. Five things cleared. When you are now here in Maidan for the Ishtima, and you have raised your hands, and you have said, Inni wajjah to wajjah lillazi, Musa is tashkil, he will not look back at his wife and child. And he will not look at back at his sheep, 10 years of his income lying in the jungle. Musa Islam said, I am afraid, I have killed a man. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am with you and I am listening. So Musa Islam came with Harun Islam, the story is long, and stood in front of Firaun. And he said, Firaun, you are not Rab, Rab is Allah. Firaun said, you are the same child who grew up in my house and you have also killed a man. Musa Islam said, no, 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 I am in now Tashkil. I am Rasul of Rabbul Alameen. This man, a very, very, very cruel king, has killed 70,000 innocent child and he can't lay his hand on Musa Islam. Allah is telling us the story. When the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu will come and stand where it is supposed to stand, nobody can touch them. Allah will destroy them. But up till, up till they, they think that they are doctors and engineers and Malaysians, Hindus can also be doctors. No, Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Believe me, nobody in this world can touch you. All the Firans, all the Namruds will come till the day of judgment. This is our duty to stand in front of them and tell them, Allah kawasa, makhluk tida kawasa. Jadi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yang akan terbiah rasul-rasulnya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yang akan terbiah da'i-da'inya. Jadi ringkasnya Nabi Musa AS, Allah terbiah beliau. Nabi Ibrahim AS, Nabi Musa AS, Allah terbiah beliau. Nabi Musa AS, untuk tak adakan dia. Yahudi untuk meniadakan dia. Fir'aun untuk meniadakan Nabi Musa AS, dia telah bunuh 70 ribu bayi. Bukan satu bayi, berapa bayi? 70 ribu bayi yang tidak bersalah telah dibunuh supaya Nabi Musa AS tak muncul tapi Allah maha berkuasa Allah telah lahirkan Nabi Musa AS Allah telah selamatkan dia di dalam bakul Allah telah selamatkan dia di atas sungai Allah telah selamatkan dia di dalam istana Fir'aun Fir'aun bunuh 70 ribu bayi supaya tak timbul Nabi Musa AS 
Tapi Nabi Musa alaihissalam itu dibesarkan di dalam rumah Fir'aun. Ya, dan akhirnya apa jadi? Nabi Musa alaihissalam telah dibesarkan. Selepas itu telah berlaku satu peristiwa. Apa peristiwa Nabi Musa alaihissalam satu pemuda yang sangat kuat. Dia telah tempeleng satu kipti, satu kipti itu kaum Fir'aun. Dia bila tempeleng, dia tak nak bunuh dia. Tapi Allah telah matikan dia. Bila Allah matikan kipti tadi, pada ketika itu Nabi Musa AS, dia lari daripada Fir'aun. Takut ditangkap oleh Fir'aun. Maka bila dia lari ke, daripada Fir'aun, dia telah sampai di bandar Madian. Ringkas cerita di sana, dia kahwin dengan anak perempuan Nabi Syaib AS. Dia kahwin dengan anak Nabi, tinggal di sana selama 10 tahun. Selepas 10 tahun, dia telah bawa kambing-kambingnya yang dihadiahkan oleh bapa mentuanya dan bersama isteri dia untuk menuju ke negeri asal dia, Mesir. Dalam perjalanan, istrinya perlu didiangkan, isteri sakit, perlu dipanaskan. Maka dia telah naik di atas bukit Tur Sina. Ringkas cerita-ceritanya panjang. Apabila dia naik di atas bukit Tur Sina, Allah telah tarbiah dia dan telah melantik dia menjadi rasul dan selepas itu dia telah diperintahkan untuk tinggalkan isteri dia yang sayat mengandung tinggalkan kambingnya pendapatan 10 tahun tinggalkan semua untuk menuju ke negeri Mesir untuk dakwah Fir'aun Allah tak tahu ke hak isteri Allah tak tahu ke hak kambing Allah tahu Tapi Allah perintah Nabi Musa AS pun faham perintah Allah Dia tinggalkan isteri, tinggalkan kambing Menuju ke Fir'aun Sampai ke Fir'aun, dia dakwa Fir'aun Kata Fir'aun, ini awak kan Yang awak ini Yang telah besar dalam istana saya Awak kan anak angkat saya Yang telah besar dalam istana saya Dan awak yang tempeleng Kaum saya sampai mati Kata Fir'aun, kata Nabi Musa AS, tidak. Saya sekarang ini Rasulullah. Rasul Allah. Saya datang di sini untuk membawa kamu kepada kepada Allah. Ya, kepada Allah. Ringkasnya, wahai saudara-saudara sekalian yang duduk di sini. Kita bukan, kalau kita kenal bahawa kita ini bukan Yahudi. Eh, kita ini bukan Pakistan. Kita ini bukan India kita ini umat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam kita tak patut ikut sebarang orang ha ini masalah kita kita ikut orang di timur kita ikut orang di barat kita ikut orang yang tak ada agama sebab itu kita hina kita kena kenal siapa kita kita adalah umat baginda sallallahu alaihi wasallam sekamana firaun tadi dia tidak boleh usik Nabi Musa AS Selepas dia membuat kerja dakwah Jadi hari ini saudara-saudara sekalian Kalau saudara-saudara sekalian Kenal diri saudara Sebagai umat baginda SAW Dan menjalankan tanggungjawab Sebagai kerja Nabi Tidak ada sesiapa pun Yang boleh usik saudara sekalian Siapa di sini berazam Untuk jadi umat Nabi Membuat kerja dakwah Alhamdulillah Allah mujhe bhi kabool farmaye aap ko bhi kabool farmaye My brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the responsibility <coughs> The Quran Majid is full of stories of Anbiya yes. Karam where Allah is describing how he tarbiyas and helps and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared that after Ibrahim alayhi salam all the people who are coming are the millet of Ibrahim even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told that you are millet Ibrahim. That is the iman Allah requires of us. We have got to learn that iman, correct our amal and present that to the whole world. We don't have to make wars with anybody. But there should be a daya in our heart that wherever we go, our studying is also dawat, our marriage is also dawat, our dying is also dawat, our eating is also dawat, our traveling is also dawat.
to learn this, we must get up and spend four months in the path of Allah so that we know what are the bases of this Dawah. And continue this effort in our university also. And wherever in the world we are go. Since today we have discussed this, there is not time enough to tell you everything. But the first thing we have got to learn is the Iman. Jadi, sedaya sedaya sekalian, hari ini kita kena kenal diri kita siapa. Tuan-tuan telah beragam untuk jadi umat baginda Rasulullah SAW untuk membuat kerja dakwah. Perkara pertama yang kita kena belajar iaitu kita kena faham tanggungjawab kita. Tanggungjawab kita umat baginda Rasulullah SAW untuk membuat kerja dakwah. Sebelum itu kita kena belajar kerja ini iaitu pertama sekali kita kena kuatkan iman kita. Pertama sekali kita kena kuatkan apa dia? Iman kita. Nombor dua, perbaiki amal kita. Amal kita cara baginda Rasulullah SAW. Bawa iman, amalan baginda Rasulullah SAW dengan membuat kerja dakwah, kita kena gerak seluruh dunia. Ya? Jadi untuk dapatkan semua ini, kalau kita dah ada tiga perkara ini, kita akan jadi asbab hidayat untuk seluruh dunia. Jadi untuk dapatkan perkara ini, perlu belajar. Sebab itu kita minta tuan-tuan sekalian untuk keluar empat bulan. Awila dah keluar empat bulan, pelajaran tuan-tuan akan jadi dakwah. Perkahwinan tuan-tuan akan jadi dakwah. Pekerjaan tuan-tuan akan jadi dakwah. Balik ke universiti kalau kerja di universiti akan jadi dakwah. Di mana saja tuan-tuan pergi akan jadi asbab hidayat. Siapa nak di dia asbab hidayat sampai mati? Siapa nak? Ah bangun Tashkin. Ah lagi 10 minit saya nak tashkid lagi sama 10 minit lagi okey insyaallah what we have got to learn is iman one iman we have learned since our birth from looking at things when we were born all the food channels were cut we saw the milk coming from the mother so you remember that every child when he is hungry where does he run He runs towards his mother. So that's the where the milk is coming from. When he grows a little bit more, he sees that this man who is coming in the house, he is known as Baba. He is very important because he brings many things. Then we have learned two rubs at home. Then we grow a little more, we see this money coming out of the pocket of the father. There is a The uh, ring gets written on it. Very important. Yes. My, my mother lets me play with all the papers, but she does not let me play with this paper. <laughs> ah, this is the biggest ilah of the ummah. We grow a little more. Oh, this paper comes from the shop. That's very important. Yes. Coming from the job. So we are all filled with this darkness in our heart. My parents, my father, mother made me put on a shot and go to school, learn more about the care of Allah. Take PhDs in the care of Allah. Learn about all the things other than Allah. So this is, this is, is not going to go out within three days or forty days or four months. This needs continuous twenty-four hours. Nafi, negating all the ghair Allah and doing the isbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha is important because la ilaha scratches away all the things out of your heart. And illallah, then Allah comes in the heart. None of the Nabi has been sent by with any other kalima except la ilaha. La ilaha illallah. Nobody does anything except Allah. The government can do nothing. Allah does everything. The money can do nothing. Allah does everything. The degrees you are running around for will do nothing. Allah will do it. The money which is lying in your pocket will do nothing. Allah will do it. Allah will do whatever He wants. Without learning this, A man is blind. 
in khasara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking swearing. Wal asri in al insana la fi khus. All the presidents and prime ministers and engineers and scientists and, 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 and doctors are in khasara. Unless they've heard, they've learned the haqeeqat of la ilaha. Yes, this is the first step. And this will not have, I can't in this 10-15 minutes describe the detail. You take billions of years, you cannot describe the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have to get up and use your own tongue in your, where you are living, in your hostels and college and go out for three days and four months and use your own tongue and ears to listen to La ilaha illa and its detail as described in Quran. So that it comes down in your heart. Unless unless you do this, we are blind. Going in a lot. Second is Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives success. Not our money. Because many people in this world are they such who don't have any money. They are poor. So Allah can't, can't be cruel that He hasn't given money to somebody. And money is the way of success. All the people cannot study in the universities like you are studying. So those people are Zali. All the people cannot be president. So all those who are not president are Zali. All the people cannot have beautiful cars and beautiful houses. No, Allah has put the success of human being in something which He has given equal to all human beings. Black and white. African and Chinese and Pakistanis and Americans and Indians. Two eyes, two ears, a tongue, two hands and two legs and a brain and a tongue. Everybody has got equal. Everybody has got equal heart. The heart must have what? La ilaha illallah. And the eyes should be used according to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tariqah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Easy for everybody. Nobody needs money for this. So deen of Islam, complete deen of Islam. From the hair right down to the tip of the nail, this person has got to use his body according to the order of Allah Ta'ala and Tariqah of Muhammad So the yakin of this has to be developed. If a person has all the Tariqah of Muhammad in his body, but he does not believe that success lies in this, he will not become successful. And he will leave it when he goes to America to study. The beard will disappear. The salat will disappear. The belief of this has to be developed. And this cannot be developed unless we give dawat of this. People will come and say, look at this very beautiful car. And we will say, no, amal is kamiyabi. Salat is kamiyabi. Zikr is kamiyabi. Being nice to somebody is kamiyabi. Giving food to a hungry man is kamiyabi. This is not kamiyabi. People will come and say, this hospital has got this doctor. We say, no, Yasin Sharif has got the cure. But we don't have the belief in our hearts, so we also have to run there. So these two beliefs we have got to develop. And Salat is the way for the Muslim to take from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the prophets have done this. All the Asabai Karam have done this. All the Oliyai Karam have done this. Salat is the way of taking success from the unlimited treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for this we have got to learn the knowledge of Islam. What, how, how does a student live in a hostel? How does he pray? How does he uh, fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So for this we have got to go out in the path of Allah. I tell you what, we are finishing after this. We went last year to a city near <coughs> Stockholm, Sweden. It was in Ishtema in Denmark. <coughs> in Raivan Mashwara, Abdul Hab Sahib was very worried that 1000 students from Pakistan has been taken to, to Sweden to study. So first they are teaching them their own language. In the classroom they are teaching them and these boys are staying with the families at their home. So they are in great dangers because they are living with the family at home and trying to learn language. These Scandinavian countries are the only country in the world 
where there is no law again uh, 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 daughter marries father or father marries daughter or sister brother you can marry a dog or, or, or a cat or whatever you want <laughs> so these boys are in great danger <coughs> so when we landed on the airport in stockholm we thought these young boys with imama and beard at reception and istiqbal we asked them they said we spent 40 days in india and pakistan in our countries they were controlling the whole stockholm they saved the iman of all those thousand brothers so if at this age we spend our time in this work allah will take us wherever he wants to make give hidayat to people but he will use us yes this is the time the youth of this umma is can change the way of the whole umma yes consider yourself each one of you is good enough for the hidayat of the whole universe nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was alone no kingdom no treasures no armies no throne like suleiman alaihi salam make one bayan in fiji island and another bayan in america and come back in the evening allah subhanahu wa taala did not give him a throne like suleiman alaihi salam no ya ayyuhal mudaththir kum get up and walk in the streets man to man they will push you they will throw stones at you they will spit on you na'uzu billah you give them daawat and then abu bakar is also doing so and bilal is also doing so and khadija radhiyallahu anha is doing so and hidayat is spreading all over the world we are today sitting here because of the blessing of these brothers to batao bhai kaun kaun the yaar jari hai ni apure jari par kit hai ni kit jari ka summa band ila kit tuhan kit samasa kit di laher kan kita disusui oleh ibu kita kita diberi makan oleh ibu kita maka kita kata ibu kita lah ilah kita Tuhan kita tapi selepas beberapa kita kita selepas beberapa ketika kita lihat bapa kita buat bawa makanan ke rumah jadi kita pun kata bapa kita ilah kita Selepas beberapa ketika pula kita lihat bapa kita bawa kertas yang berharga yang bernama ringgit ke rumah kita. Ringgit ini dia bawa ke rumah kita dan kita nampak harga ringgit ini. Dan kita lihat kertas ini semua kertas lain ibu kita boleh pegang dan main-main. Tapi kertas yang bernama ringgit ini Ibu kita tak dibenarkan main selalu Bapa kita simpan kadang-kadang Kerana Kertas ringgit ini berharga Kena kita dah fikir Dari mana dapat ringgit ini Rupanya ringgit ini datang Daripada kedai Ringgit ini datang daripada pejabat Ringgit ini datang daripada pertanian Jadi kita pula Dah menganggap kedai Pejabat pertanian kita Ilah kita jadi hari ini kita kena keluar empat bulan untuk memahami bahawa ibu kita bukan ilah kita, bapa kita bukan ilah kita, perniagaan pertanian pekerjaan kita bukan ilah kita, ilah kita hanya Allah Rabbul Alamin. Dan untuk itu apabila kita keluar empat bulan, perkara yang pertama kita kena belajar ialah La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah Ada dua perkara di situ Satu ialah nafi Yang kedua ialah isbat Nafi ialah kita kena scratch Bersihkan Macam satu papan hitam Ada tulisan Kena scratch tulisan tadi Kena buang tulisan tadi Dengan la ilaha Nafi Kena kena tulis yang betul Tulis balik tu yang betul Illallah Isbat Jadi hati kita ini kena buang segala-gala Selain daripada Allah Kita kena masukkan Allah Hari ini apa telah jadi pada kita Daripada kecil sampai ke PhD Kita belajar Ghairullah Kita belajar apa dia? Ghairullah Selain daripada Allah kita belajar Dari dia 1 sampai ke dia 6 Daripada sekolah menengah 
Sampai ke universiti pun buat kajian Hoirullah Tidak ada kajian yang kita buat Untuk mengenal Allah Untuk mengenal Khalid Tak ada Semua kenal makhluk Ya, Sebab tu hari ini kita kena keluar Empat bulan di jalan Allah Supaya kita kenal siapa dia Rabb kita Siapa dia Khalid kita Siapa dia Allah Untuk tu kita kena keluar empat bulan Ya Dan selepas kita keluar empat bulan, kita kena bawa di dalam kehidupan, kehidupan kita. InsyaAllah ya. Jadi sebab itu kata beliau, satu ketika beliau pergi Stockholm. You went to Stockholm. Beliau pergi ke Stockholm. Dihantar oleh satu guzruk besar namanya Bay Abdul Wahab Sab. Bay Abdul Wahab Sab, dia sangat bimbang. Seribu pelajar Pakistan dihantar untuk belajar di Denmark, Sweden. Scandinavian countries. Semua tahu undang-undang di Scandinavian countries Tiada undang-undang perkahwinan Bapa boleh kahwin anak Anak boleh kahwin bapa Bapa isteri Allah boleh jadi isteri kita Adik-beradik boleh kahwin Atau ringkasnya dia boleh kahwin dengan anjing dan kucing pun Begitulah undang-undang dia apa? Di negara Scandinavian Jadi Bayi Abdul Hab bimbang seribu pelajar Pakistan Mereka belajar di universiti Kemudian tinggal di rumah mereka ini Dia buat begitu tinggal di rumah mereka ini Supaya iman mereka dirosakkan Jadi jemaah beliau Dan dia ikut jemaah itu Telah diantar ke negara itu Sampai di airport Stockholm Sampai di airport Stockholm Ada beberapa orang pelajar Yang pakai baju sunnah Janggut panjang pakai imamah Mereka pun terkejut tengok Siapa kamu ini? Mereka beritahu kami telah lapangkan masa kami Ada di antaranya telah keluar 4 bulan Ada di antaranya telah keluar 4 bulan hari Di India dan Pakistan Mereka hari ini telah mengawal keadaan di Stockholm Seribu pelajar Pakistan tadi Mereka telah dapat selamatkan iman mereka Ya katilah saya mau tuan-tuan sekalian di sini Menjadi pelajar-pelajar begitu InsyaAllah ya Jadi untuk itu sedaya-sedaya sekalian saya tak mau cerita panjang Ringkasnya Tuan-tuan sendiri tahu Apa perlu kita buat Hari ini kita kena ambil tanggungjawab Untuk belajar iman Belajar amal Bawa dalam kehidupan kita Ada apa saya tinggal tadi? Boleh eh? Ha, jadi saya rasa itu perkara yang penting Jadi untuk tu okay, Jadi untuk tu Siapa nak jadi seperti itu Di mana hidupnya Agama tersebar Belajarnya Agama tersebar Kerjanya Agama tersebar Kawannya agama tersebar Siapa nak ajar itu? InsyaAllah ha, Bangun 4 bulan tunai sekarang juga Bangun ha, 4 bulan sekarang ya oh. no, Eh tadi angkat tangan sekarang letak tangan Sama cerita ha, ha, Bismillah 4 bulan tunai Now we will come to know who has said Inni wajah tu wajah Haa sekarang kita dapat tahu Siapa yang benar-benar Inni wajah wajah tu tadi Haa sekarang benar Siapa yang benar Bangun laki-laki bangun Bismillah Do other gentlemen please wake up brothers Rawash oh. Jump into the lap of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Azam dulu, jangan risau Azam dulu Azam dulu Apa yang belajar? Empat bulan oh, oh, Bangun Angkat tangan Pak Sina Sina, bangun Brother, please wake up Wake up, Pak Sina Is very strong? Oh, good morning Rest of my life for Islam, insyaAllah Buka pintu, jangan pecahkan pintu. Buka masara, okay? Okay. Siapa yang ada pen dan buku, tulis nama kiri awak semua orang. Ha, terus, berada, write their name, which university, when they are going for months. Ha, tiga perkara tulis, nama mereka. Satu orang, setiap orang yang ada buku dan pen, ha, jadikan buku dan pen sedara sebagai saksi. Tulis saudara tulis nama, universiti mana, empat bulan bila. Nama, universiti mana, empat bulan bila. Ini, which university, and when they are going for months. Ha, nama ini sebenarnya Empat bulan bila Habis belajar empat bulan Habis belajar empat bulan Ujung tahun ni masih cuti empat bulan 
Aduh, 